restore your fortunes and gather you from all the nations. This is speaking to Israel. But God says that the old covenant and the old covenant promises the new covenant is better than the promises that he made in the old covenant. So everything that you read in the old covenant, even if it's attached to Israel, is the heartbeat of what God wants to do for you. If you seek him, if you cry out to him, you will find him. Years ago, in one of the darkest times of my life, when I needed him, I sought him, and I found out how real he was. What's amazing to me that consistently happens, and I'm consistently encouraging people, is that one of the best things that you can do when you're hurting, when you're, there's a point of darkness, when things aren't going well, is to cry out to seek him because of these promises. And when you find God, what are you going to find? When you find God, what are you going to find, students of the Bible? Love. Students of the nature of God. When you cry out to God, when you seek Him, what are you going to find? What are you going to find, congregation? Forgiveness, love. He's trustworthy. Peace. You guys are giving me the shotgun approach. But if you're going to give me the shotgun approach, I need boldness. I need peace, joy, love, strength. Because everybody else is talking at the same time, so I really need to hear you. And that's really key, what I just stepped on right there. The loudest voice gets your attention. The loudest voice makes the difference. You determine which is going to be the loudest voice. Let me read some more scriptures and I'll get back to that. It says in Matthew 7, 7 through 8, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and the one who knocks, it will be opened. First Chronicles 16, 11. Seek the Lord and His strength. Seek His presence continually. Lamentations 3, 25. The Lord is good to those who wait for Him. To the soul who seeks him. Isaiah 55, 6 through 7. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. This is critical. I'm going to say it again. This is so critical. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord that he may have compassion on him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Say abundantly pardon. Why do you think the scripture that I just read is so critically important? I'm curious if you know why I think that what I just said is so critically important. We were sinners, but we're righteous now. We're just kids that make mistakes. That's good. You're all close. There's an attitude that actually exists in a lot of other areas of our life. I'll focus on my health next week. I'll focus on forgiving that person next week, but not right now. There's a real disease that can control our life and destroy our life, and it's procrastination. Which is totally the opposite of what the Spirit of God says throughout the Word of God. The Word of God says watch. The Word of God says be alert. The Word of God says be diligent. All words that are proactive words. Words that are now words. It says faith is now. It says now faith is. So the Lord really wants us to understand that there's a nowness when he speaks something to us. And that he really wants us to be aware that the door's open and you don't know how much more time you have left. None of us right now has any, has, you do not have a clue of how much more time you have left on this earth. There's a promise that you may have 70 to 80, 90 years, but you don't know exactly. And there's a reverence that the Lord wants us to operate in 
of how important it is the first and foremost Jesus said hey, guys don't worry about your needs seek first me put me first there, there's a fire that the Lord wants to create inside of us to burn away all procrastination there was a call by the Spirit of God today during worship to respond now, I don't know if everybody responded in the way the Holy Spirit wanted them to respond because I, I am not God. But I am a spokesman that knows, based on Scripture, that God knows things that we don't know. So if we feel impressed by the Spirit of God that He's calling or He's asking us to do something, that we have, He wants that, that contrite heart, excuse me, and that sensitivity to move when He says move. I'll give next week. I'll give when I have more money. I'll do that when it's more convenient. The Lord doesn't want us to be slothful. The Lord wants us to be quick to hear, wanting to hear, desirous to hear, and moving as He's asked us to move. It's so important. I just read an article, and, and, and I wasn't sure how I was going to process this, um, but I think I'm supposed to step out and process this and believe that you hear my heart right now. I read an article, I think it came out of Charisma Magazine, and it says one of the worst things, uh, can be one of the worst things, like every good thing, it can have a bad si side to it, is social media. People around the globe are depending on services through media instead of coming to the local church. They're, they're deciding whether Sunday morning if they can fit it into their schedule or not. And, they, and what happens is, well, I can watch it video tonight or I can watch the video tomorrow night. And that's a blessing. And I need to thank God for that because it is a blessing. But I just want you to be aware that there's something that happens live that doesn't happen in the video. And I can tell you one thing that happens live that doesn't happen over the video. You find out if you can really love each other. See, the new commandment says, Jesus gave a new commandment, said, love one another. You're not really going to find out how well you are at loving people by looking at them either in a text message or in a video. It's not that you start rubbing shoulders and you start getting irritated about some of the things that they're saying or doing in your presence that you find out how much love that's inside of you. So as a good shepherd with the right heart that wants the best, I'll tell you another thing that happens. That you encourage other people when you show up. Matter of fact, how many have been by a restaurant that's packed out? Cars are coming out the kazoo parking lot. What do you think when people go by that restaurant, people think about that restaurant? I don't got time right now to stop at that restaurant, but something good must be happening at that restaurant because all those cars wouldn't be there. So just by those people going to that restaurant, get someone else's attention, encourages someone else to partake of what's there. There's the callousness that I, that I want, I, I, and I wasn't even planning on going here today, but I feel that there's a callousness that can so subtly, it's like the frog in the kettle that can, can come on us, that we don't realize the impact of our presence. We don't realize the impact of our attitude. We don't realize the impact of our actions. It just like slowly creeps in without us even knowing it. The reason the power and love is producing so much fruit is because they're helping people recognize that their identity and how important they are and what they have the ability to do. So if that's the case, what is the enemy going to want to come in and do? He, he's going to come in and say, you know, Mary, you're really not making a difference. You know, you've been praying for that thing for five years and, and you're not seeing any results in there. Is everybody with me? The Lord wants you to know that your attitude, your beliefs, your thinking makes a difference. Jesus said, your words move mountains. So there is a, there is a um, cloaking that can happen without us even knowing it. That the Lord 
wants us to be aware of and to be removed off of us. And one of the things, and I did not plan this in reading these scriptures, one of the things that the Lord wants to impart to you right now is this. Matthew 6, 33. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. The kingdom of God means doing life the way He would want us to do it. And His righteousness, His character, the fruit of the Spirit, His attitude. And all these things will be added to you. Psalm 119.10. With, all, with my whole heart I seek you. Let me not wander from your commandments. Jeremiah 29, 13. You will seek me. Now this is the Lord himself speaking through the prophet of Jeremiah. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. There's a qualification there. Hebrews eleven six. Without faith it is impossible to please or honor God, for whoever would draw near to God must believe that He exists and that He re rewards those who seek Him. Amen. Psalm 63, 1, a psalm of David. When he was in the wilderness of Judah, O God, you are my God. Earnestly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you as in a dry and weary land where there is no water. Psalm 34, 10. The young lions suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Amen. Now let's consider this. This is a promise from Almighty God, and it's really not that long, but it's very intense. The young lions suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing thing. We know that there's two spirits. There's the spirit that represents Jesus and the Father, the spirit of love, and there's a spirit that represents the evil side. You know, Star Trek isn't too far off. There's the good and the evil, Star Wars. You can tell I'm neither one of them. Isn't it interesting, in most movies, it's always about evil versus good. And if you watch the, the, the cop shows, it's because you really want to see good overcome evil. That's what's inside of us. If I'm the enemy, I'm going to try to get you to seek everything but God. I'm going to try to get you to seek lollipops. I'm going to try to get you to seek everything possible other than Him. Because I know if I can distract you and get you to put your hope in something other than Him, you're going to miss out on what God has for you. Let me go to Isaiah. The Lord really wants to prove to you and really wants you to exercise your faith on a daily basis that something good is going to happen. Something good is going to happen. Now, I just gave you many scriptures about seeking Him, crying out to Him, trusting Him, putting all your hope in Him, and the major promises. And there's many more that I could read to you. But I want to read you a different portion of scripture because the Lord wants to totally saturate you that something good is going to happen. The Bible says, going back to Mary and her persistence in prayer, the Bible says that the prayer, the heartfelt, say heartfelt, heartfelt. earnest, say earnest, earnest. Prayer, prayer, that means communication with God, is going to produce great results. In Ephesians, it says that we, not, we do not wrestle with people, flesh and blood, but we wrestle with principalities and powers of God. Excuse me. Yeah, I'm one step here. I am so glad that you're alert. Principalities and powers of the air. The Lord wants you to know that His promises are available, but there is a wrestling match sometimes that you have to enter into. 
And that wrestling is within your head and within your heart whether we're going to believe and keep believing whether we see an answer as quickly as we want to see it or not. The Lord wants to ignite a fire inside of you where you dogmatically take the word of God and say, I am righteous because of the blood of Jesus. The Lord says, if I pray heartfelt, earnest, genuine prayers, that something good is going to happen. There is a tenacity and impartation of fire, tenacity of faith that the Lord wants to put inside of where you, where you refuse to back down. There is much confusion in the body of Christ concerning what Todd White is being used as a catalyst to promote throughout the world, and that is healing and God being able to heal. Spiritually, physically, financially, relationally, mentally, emotionally, his focus is physical. Mine is more about the heart and the soul and healing the brokenhearted. But there is a battle for people not to receive that. And the Lord wants to put a fire inside of us to a place of a proclamation. I will see the fullness of God's good plan for me and my family. And I refuse to compromise and come up with a doctrine that God is not interested in that anymore. That God really doesn't have a good plan for me. The Lord, through those drums today, I'll give you another word, wants to obliterate a compromising attitude. Well, this is just the way the Lord, it's going to go. Bam! This is who I am. This is what I'm doing. Something good is going to happen. You can even go to the point of fiery faith and use Romans 8, 28. When you are doing what the Word of God tells you and it doesn't seem like the mountains are moving. Matter of fact, it seems like the mountain is getting bigger. Not only is the mountain getting bigger, but all of a sudden there's a mountain range. It went from one mountain to now a mountain range. Have you ever seen someone feeling like they're cresting the top of a mountain, they get to the top of the mountain, and there's no valley, they just see more mountains. I've seen a picture like that, that's why I can visualize it. The Lord wants to put a fiery faith inside of his people, a bold doggedness, that uh, a locked jaw faith, you know, that bulldogs, correct me, dog people, if I'm wrong here, but I believe this is true because I was prophesied that I wasn't as ugly as a bulldog, but I was a bulldog. I didn't have the jowls and the cheeks of a bulldog, but I had what a, I believe a bulldog is known for, correct me if I'm wrong, an ability to lock their jaw and not let go. That is what you are called to be. I don't know if it's the title of the day, but I feel the fire of God. Possibly this could be the title of the day. You are called to be a bulldog. You are called to get the word of God inside of you to the deepest part of your heart and hold on to it no matter how hard the wind blows, no matter how deep the fiery darts go, no matter how hurting or grieving you're feeling, the Lord will rescue you and resurrect you if you will not let go. And he deserves that, everyone. I was listening to Lance Walno. I told you last week, a coaching program. And he said, the reason that most, and he's an he's a international consultant uh, in the body of Christ, in the business world. And he made this statement 
And he said, the reason that 80% of the Christians do not see the fullness of their destiny is they quit. We are not called to quit. We are not called to back down. We are not to, called to give up. And what I mean by that, I'm not talking about being arrogant with people. I'm talking about looking in the mirror. I'm talking about being bold with yourself, being arrogant with yourself, being talking back. To yourself. There's a lady who is tremendous, and I think I sent out the resource to those that get my text message. She's a scientist that goes all over, all over the world talking about the brain. And just tremendous stuff and just excellent, and I can't go into it. But she talks about the reality of your thought life and what you're saying inside and what it creates in your brain. It actually creates trees in your brain. Proteins that create these things that look like trees. She actually shows it in her videos. You have the ability by what you choose to think to produce life inside of you, according to this scientist, and life outside of you. The strategy of the enemy is to convince you what you're being told here does not work, so you will give up. Don't give up. Look in the mirror and say, I'm not as ugly as a bulldog, but I got the lockjaw of a bulldog. My God reigns, my God is with me, and something good is going to happen. I haven't proved my point enough. Thank you for making me work some more. Isaiah 61. This is the heart of God. Again, some of you know it. Some of you don't know it. This is the heart of our God. Isaiah speaking. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed and qualified me to preach the good news of good tidings to the meek, the poor, the afflicted. He has sent me to bind up and heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the physical and spiritual captives, and the opening of the prison of the eyes to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable, acceptable year of the Lord and the year of His favor, and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to grant consolation and joy to those who mourn in Zion, to give them an ornament, a garland or a diadem of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, the garment of expressive praise instead of a heavy burden, failing spirit, that they may be called oaks of righteousness, lofty, strong, and magnificent, distinguished for uprightness, justice and right standing with God, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. What's really going on in your life? It's the resistance of the enemy through circumstances, through broken and lack of knowledge people, through negative circumstances to get you to quit so God is not glorified. The whole battle here, it hasn't changed. When Lucifer, who was the main man in heaven with God, his, he, was, he was like the right hand man to God. He had it made. But it wasn't enough. He wanted the worship of God. And he took a third of his angels and like a mutiny against the captain of a ship. And he was cast down with a third of the angels. He is still looking for the worship today. And you know how he tries to get it indirectly from you and I? By wearing you out with circumstances so you quit believing in the truth and the truth teller and the truth maker and the creator, he inadvertently gets your worship when you give up. So the thing that he couldn't get on heaven, he gets through us without us even knowing by saying unbelieving things like, well, you know, it just doesn't work for me. It might work for Dan Perucio, but it just doesn't work for me. He gets us through our thought life to not believe and to doubt 
So we will stop worshiping. When we stop worshiping, trusting, putting our hope in God, because the voice of circumstances is greater than our voice speaking the word of God, he inadvertently gets the worship from us that he couldn't get in heaven. How many inadvertently want to give the devil the worship? Not any one of you. If that was the case, you wouldn't be sitting here. But the Lord wants you to understand that the, your whole life is about, is God going to get the glory or is the enemy going to get the glory? Is God going to get the glory or is the enemy going to get the glory? What does that mean more practically? What am I going to believe and what am I going to say? Am I going to stand up and say, I'm a child of God? No, still not convinced. Psalm 23. It's okay. No problem. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd to feed, guide, and shield me. I shall not lack. When lack is screaming in your face like with Melissa and Tom Ferrania because he lost his job and the unemployment is two-thirds if not a half of what they've been living on, the voice of lack is screaming at Tom and Melissa Ferrania right now, whether you knew that or not. That voice, through circumstances, through a paycheck cut in half, is screaming at her with three kids. Melissa and Tom have a choice. Are they going to say what fear says? We're not going to make it. We're going down. The ship's going down. The paycheck's going down. We're not going to make it. Or are they going to stand up? Are they going to talk back? And they are going to say what the Lord says. That's your and I choice every single day. And you are being called to be a bulldog and make a locked jaw. Uh, a locked jaw. Thank you. I was going to say posture. Confession. God is with me. Check this out. The Lord is my shepherd to feed, guide, and shield me. I shall not lack. He makes me lie down in fresh, tender, green pastures. This is putting in context to a shepherd and a sheep. He leads me beside the still and restful waters. He refreshes and restores my life, myself. He leads me in the paths of righteousness, uprightness, and right standing with him. Not for my earning, but for his name's sake. Yes, though I walk through the deep, sunless valley of the shadow of death, I will fear or dread no evil. For you are with me. Read an article in the same magazine yesterday. They said the number one idolatry in the world today for Christians is the spirit of fear. The word of the Lord says be not afraid. What that really means is don't open the door to that voice of fear. Your heart is valuable. When fear knocks, lock the deadbolt if it isn't already there. Slam the door in that face, that voice of fear, and say, you do not have permission to come near. The Lord is my shepherd, and according to Psalm 23, every one of my needs are going to be met. Do you hear me? The Lord doesn't... Why is there so much fire in me today concerning this? He refreshes and restores my life. He leads me. He guides me. He shows me the way. Please repent. Please. Sincerely and genuinely repent from saying you don't know. It's impossible for you not to know if you seek him. Because I just read you 10 or 15 scriptures that if you seek him, you will find him. And when you find him, you find life and light and wisdom and understanding and insight and knowledge when you find him. The only way that you're not going to find God is if you don't seek him. The only way you're going to stay in confusion if you don't seek him.
You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. What does that mean? What's the practicality of that? It means when you're in circle and there doesn't seem to be any way out or reason for any hope, God is saying even in the worst of the worst situations where you're totally encircled, your finances are bad, your health is bad, your marriage is bad, relationships are bad, the job is bad. Every, t- every time you turn around, all you see is bad. The Lord is penetrating and permeating this into my soul where now, has anybody ever heard someone say, every time I turn around, I mean every time I turn around. I mean, every time I turn around. The Lord wants to put a new confession in your heart. Every time I turn around, something good is happening. The Lord is calling us into this violent faith of adhering agreement to who he is. Faithful, kind, generous, amazing truthful, wise, excellent, and his promises. So the only thing that comes out of our mouth, it says here, continues, you anoint my head with oil. That means you give me favor. Surely and only goodness, mercy, and unfailing love shall follow me all the days of my life. And through the length of my days in the house of, excuse me, and through the length of my days, the house of the Lord, the presence of God, shall be my dwelling place place. The Lord wants to empower you. But that doesn't happen unless we exercise our faith in Him. When we got saved, we heard the Word of God. Jesus is the supreme authority. That's what Lord means. He died for me. He made a way for me out of sin, out of darkness, into light. And there's a place in heaven that I can go to when I'm all done here. That's good news. There's hope. It takes away the whole sting and fear of death. When we believe that, God comes into our life. And what was in the unseen, what we didn't have before, his presence inside of us, becomes a reality inside of us. That principle is the everyday nanosecond principle that produces abundant life for you. There is no other way that works. There's no other way. Putting our hope in anything else is vanity and fruitless. Complaining is vanity and fruitless. The Lord is charging and challenging you to seek him so you will know him and find him to be a bulldog person that says i don't care what it looks like the fullness of the goodness of god's plan that he made me to to experience and to see work through me is going to happen in my life that's the boldness that the lord wants to put inside of us and come out inside of us guys girls The world is desperate for people, Christians, that are that, have that tenacity and that kind of courage Mm -hmm. in the midst of the all hell breaking loose. Stand up and say, God is with me. God is with me. Something good has happened. Jesus said, guys, I'm going up, but I'm sending you out and I'm going to be with you wherever you go. That's right. So if there's anything and something you can always say is something good's going to happen because God is with me. Something good is going to happen because God is with me. And if it doesn't look like anything good is going to happen, Romans 8.28 says, all things will work together for good for me because God is with me. The Lord is looking for us to sing a song consistently that something good is going to happen. Because of who our God is and what he has promised me. And not back 
down. A fiery faith. Amen. That was awesome. I would just like to bring closure with one more scripture, but before I do, to tie in the word of the Lord for you, which is God wants you to come into the fullness of blooming beginning in June. In order to do that, you need the fiery faith. So what I hear the Spirit of God saying is there's like a turbocharge being added to you. And the reason that we need that is because of the season that we're entering into. I don't understand it all. I won't pretend to. But I know that the Lord is asking your faith to be full and to be uh, sound and to be stable and you to be strengthened. Everybody go like this. How do you get strong? You lift muscles, right? Resist. You're lifting muscles today by coming here and hearing the word of the Lord. And so to bring it full circle about the urgency of God and his word, what he wants us to hear. The kingdom of heaven, this is Matthew 25, verse 1. The kingdom of heaven can be illustrated by the story of ten bridesmaids who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. But only five of them were wise enough to fill their lamps with oil while the other five were foolish and forgot. We're talking about priorities. How often we say, oh, I forgot to do that. What are you saying? You're saying it wasn't high enough on my priority list. So they forgot to put oil in their lamps. The oil represents the Spirit of God, the Word of God, getting filled with the fullness of God. They forgot, and it says that they were foolish in their forgetting. So when the bridegroom was delayed, they lay down to rest until midnight when they were aroused by a shout. The bridegroom is coming. Come out and welcome him. All the girls jumped up and trimmed their lamps. Then the five who hadn't put any oil, who hadn't any oil, begged those to share with them for their lamps were going out. But the others replied, we don't have enough. Go instead to the shops and buy some for yourselves. But while they were gone, the bridegroom came and those who were ready went with him to the marriage feast, and the doors were locked. And when the other five returned, they stood outside calling, Sir, open the door for us. And he called back, Go away, it is too late. So stay awake and be prepared, for you do not know the date or moment of my return. Jesus is coming back. We truly don't know the day or time. 2,000 years ago, they thought it was delayed. 2,000 years later, we are waiting for his return. God knows the moment, but in the meantime, we need to be urgent. We need to be vigilant with our faith because we never know in a given moment what we may face. We, we, we don't know in this world. That's not to make us afraid. That's to encourage you to be urgent in your faith, to grow in your faith, because you'll be prepared with whatever comes your way. God will meet you right there. You won't need to fear. You'll have the answers and the clarity you need, and you can move into what God is asking you to. So, Father, I thank you for sharing your heart with us today. Your word, your heart, your presence, it is so rich, and we are so thankful that we can be your children, that we can come together, we can learn, we can grow, we can love, we can be loved, we can identify, and we can be identified as your kids. I thank you for teaching and training us. I thank you for releasing us into the fullness. I thank you for the blooming that is to come. And I thank you that we get to do all of this with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, welcome to summer. Yes. Woo!